Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Spumele Lezondi with your technology and social media news. Now remember that if you want to be a part of this technology conversation, you can find us on SABC Network. Now that's on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. It's News Network at sabc.co.za on email. You can also use the hashtag SABC Network. Here's what's coming up in the program. Alibaba founder Jack Ma has launched a 10 million US dollars a prize to help Africa's internet entrepreneurs. Huawei is hoping to overtake Samsung, while Samsung has launched a new phone targeting gamers and creatives. As artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things take over our lives, we discuss an expo that will showcase how they can be used. Emma Murray from Microsoft is here for that one. Hello and thank you very much for being a part of our network. Good morning, Super Milena. Now, how important is this when it comes to businesses? Oh, it's vital, uh, not only to businesses, but to organizations, government as well. Um, this is driving transformation. This is driving change. All right. We'll have a deeper discussion about that later in the program. But first, your social media and technology news. Now, Africa's internet entrepreneurs have an additional 10 million US dollars they can apply for to assist them with some of their projects. This comes in the form of the Africa Netpreneur Fund by Chinese internet billionaire Jack Ma. Ma announced this in Johannesburg recently. Africa's internet entrepreneurs came to the Netpreneur Summit to get information and share personal stories. Then there was incredible news that Jack Ma, the founder of the biggest online store in the world, Alibaba, has set 10 million US dollars aside for them. He wants African governments to do their part. The technology is there. The only thing is you want your people to be rich. You want your small business to reach the money. So please, all the government policymakers, encouraging the inclusive financing. And the technology is there. Alibaba would do anything to share the technology. And the second thing is logistics. All the African countries should be working together, over 54 countries, make a free trade, make the logistics center. Logistics can create millions and millions of jobs for Africa. If somebody have an idea, can global buy, global sell, global deliver, it would be such a great opportunity. So, and tourism. There are a lot of opportunities here. So let's make Africa a digital. Some entrepreneurs here have already been to China as part of the Alibaba Business School. They spent a few weeks gaining relevant skills that can help them with their online businesses in Africa. Some shared their personal stories. One day I got on a chopper and we flew over one of the communities that supplied gas to the company that I worked for. And I observed something that stuck to my memory and I've never forgotten that image. It was an image of poverty. I saw naked kids running around. I saw dilapidated buildings. I saw unpaved roads. Uh, I saw un un underdevelopment. And I couldn't reconcile how a community that had so much wealth in it could at the same time experience so much poverty at the same time. And at that moment as well, I remember the power that I felt when I built my first, my first program. So I decided that it was time to transition, to go use technology to solve important problems. Adetayo Pamiduro later started an online motorbike public transport service with some of his friends in order to answer mobility issues for the poor in Nigeria. My name is Intavile Ndikoti, and I'm this crazy young woman who thinks that she can own a bank in South Africa. As entrepreneurs, we need to put our own money in solving our own problems. We cannot wait for aid to assist us. So how about we use the very same model that we know and understand very well and use it to empower ourselves? That's how the bank was formed. The, re the requirement was 100,000 rand share capital. I promise you, we did it at 2 million rand in nine months, never been done in this country. Yes. Ma says the internet allows diversity and inclusion that involves Africans and women. 
Let's make Africa a digital Africa, making every young people have the opportunities. The other chance for Africa is globalization. I'm a strong believer of globalization. Glo nobody can stop globalization. Globalization has nothing wrong, but globalization needs to improve. Globalization in the past 30 years only focused on developed countries, big companies. We should make globalization more inclusive to support the young people, small business, and women. Ma says his Africa Netpreneur Fund is for dreamers who often get ignored by banks who have a lack of vision. He says this is because when he registered his Alibaba 19 years ago, China didn't even have the internet and he knows how it is to be a dreamer whose vision isn't understood. Now, gaming seems to be where smartphone makers are concentrating nowadays. The world's most popular smartphone distributor, Samsung, has revealed its new Galaxy Note 9, which is said to be a gaming device. The new device has a 6.4-inch display screen. It has two options for storage, the first being 128 gigs and the second being 512 gigs. There is also a port for a micro SD card that supports 512 gigs of storage. A a feature many might like, or not, is the S Pen, which can be used as a remote control for the phone, especially when taking or viewing photos and video. At least one gamer feels creatives are the right target audience. Everyone now, Everyone is, now is, is targeting gamers, or where you see uh, most uh, smartphones, the LED screens stretch all the way. Some have that tiny notch, some of the screens are edge in the corners. But if you look at it from a visual perspective, uh, gaming graphics on mobile phones have, in, have been improving over the years to a certain extent where high-end phones uh, have not necessarily similar, but close to console graphics, where it's, it's as real as it gets. It, it reminds you of a PSP or a PS Vita or your thing, or your Nintendo Game Boy, but but much better. And instead of you walking around with uh, one handheld uh, gaming console and your cell phone, now they've merged it into one. Now behind Samsung is Huawei, which is now at number two after overtaking Apple recently. They say the plan is to overtake Samsung and be the biggest smartphone distributor in the world. The folks at Huawei say they will also be targeting creatives and gamers now. Huawei have launched the new uh, innovation technology, the GPU Turbo technology. This technology will increase the gaming performance uh, and uh, uh, bring the, the better experience for the, the gaming users. This technology not only uh, bring the, the benefit for the gaming, in the future we can bring the, the more benefit for the other application. And uh, at the first stage, uh, we will focus on the, the gaming application and uh, focus on the gaming user experience. So from the uh, end of August, we will bring the, this new technology to South Africa. They're both from Asia. We wait for that African-developed phone. Now a group of Egyptian students have designed a car that doesn't need fuel to move. All it needs is air. Promoting clean energy and battling rising fuel prices, nine students at an Egyptian university have managed to design an air-powered vehicle which they say costs nearly nothing to move. The Helwell University students researched the possibility of a theory which sees regular compressed air as a means to operate vehicle motors. One year on, they have been able to transform the idea into a functioning vehicle. What is more important than its primary price? It is the operational cost of the vehicle. It will be almost nothing. You are basically using compressed air. You are not paying for fuel and you do not need cooling. It is already cool because you have air getting into the engine and it's cold air. The vehicle now has a top speed of 40 kilometers an hour and could drive for 30 kilometers before the fuel is depleted. The overall cost reach is 15,000. The students believe that with the efficient use of resources, the top speed could reach 100 kilometers per hour and drive for an equal time before stopping. 
The team now wishes for more funding, which could enable them to produce the vehicle on mass scale and even promote the usage of their motors on production lines. As for the storage, we get a compressor and we compress the air, which then gets stored in tanks, and this is what we use. It is similar to car tanks, but instead we use air. The gas-run vehicles has the tanks at the back. It has gas and when driving the vehicle uses the gas while it is moving. Many ordinary Egyptians can no longer afford needs like fuel for cars. They have been hit hard by austerity measures, especially the current devaluation, so such an invention will be welcome. Now after the break, we chat to Microsoft's Emma Murray about the Artificial Intelligence Expo. Stay with us. Unfair dismissal, car accident, court appearance. You. Let Trantel Legal tackle your legal problems. Whether it is a car accident, unfair dismissal, uncontested divorce, unfair blacklisting, or a wrongful arrest, we have tough professional lawyers standing by to assist you. With the help of Trantel Legal, I kept my job and I can support my family. I definitely got value for money. It didn't cost me a cent, just my monthly premium. There was one man with his lawyer against a big bank and I won. Car accident. Faulty goods or bad service? You fired! Unfair business. No matter how big or small your legal problems, don't tackle them by yourself. Clientel Legal will do the tough work for you. SMS right to 32281 and we'll call you back. It is the CBC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you very much for staying with us. Now, AI is on the verge of penetrating every major industry, from health to advertising and now inside the workplace. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are becoming increasingly important to many organizations' success. Businesses today take up AI technology to reduce operational costs, grow revenue and to improve customer experience. CISPRO says the growth of artificial intelligence carries several benefits for both public and private sector. We talk about um, artificial intelligence, bots and those type of technologies where organizations will be able to have insights into their business. Traditionally ERP has been a system of record, but with the new CISPRO 8 we are able to bring a system of engagement to the customers and our customer base. As we have said here on Network before, many look at these innovations with a deep sense of fear, envisioning a future where robots take over their jobs. Artificial intelligence is teaching us to also think out of the box and think differently and think, think of the impossible. And in that I think it's encouraging because what it's encouraging is new jobs and new things for people to think about. Technology experts say artificial intelligence has the potential to double the growth rate of the South African economy. We are already seeing a massive potential breakout of AI applications because of the amount of organizations that are getting venture capital funding, particularly in Silicon Valley. So at the end of 2017, there were more than 2,000 startups getting something like $27 billion in venture capital funding. As the job market continues to change, experts say workers need to ensure they remain employable by learning new skills. And an artificial intelligence expo is planned for Cape Town on September 11. To tell us more about this is Microsoft's Emma Murray. Hello and thank you very much for being a part of our network, Emma. Thank you very much, Siko Malele. What is AI exactly? Very simply, AI is the ability to recognize text and images, to learn and to interpret that much the same as humans. Mm. Um, uh, but uh, it, it's not exactly the same as humans, is it? Absolutely not. There's no creativity. Um, so that's, that's the magic for the humans. It does the repetitive task. So a lot of people fear this, as we heard on, uh, in the insights that we just had. Um, uh, uh, should humans worry? Will then AI-enabled machines take over what they do? 
So it's no different from any other of the industrial revolutions where new advances were found. If you have a look at the first industrial revolution with the steam engine, it was the guy who drove the horse-drawn carriage whose job was reduced significantly. Currently, yes, there will be some repetitive tasks that are reduced, um, but this is aimed to free up humans so that they can become more creative, thinking out the box, solving new modern challenges. Mm. Um, as Microsoft, why is this important to you? So for us, it's basically our ability to help the world do more, help people and organizations to achieve more. Um, and so with this, we're aiming to help uh, digital transformation, both for businesses to become more innovative and more creative and competitive, and also governments who can use more resources or who can use the resources to achieve more. Mm. Um, so if I own a business that's been doing whatever it's been doing for um, the last 10 years, for example, what is it that I can do or how can I go about implementing um, AI? Well, firstly, you need to understand that there's a lot of change that's happening in the industry. So if you look at industries such as taxi drivers or hotels, they've had their business interrupted and completely disrupted by software organizations. So nowadays, it's no longer just the competitors in your traditional market, it's competitors from other areas that you wouldn't have thought coming before. AI is your ability to preempt those things, to look deeper into what is happening and to become more creative and out of the box in addressing some of these challenges. You guys are participating in, in the expo. What's Microsoft going to be doing at the expo? So Microsoft is going to be addressing all the um, AI and showcasing all of our solutions around digital transformation. That will talk to empowering employees to achieve more. It will talk to engaging customers in a more meaningful and personalized way. It will speak to increasing productivity within organizations and optimizing their performance. And it will also talk to the transformation opportunities around products and services. Mm. And a lot of uh, businesses, when they are implementing AI, um, they, uh, sometimes it becomes almost a buzzword. Um, can one strategy that works in one company um, uh, directly be distributed across all companies? Or should you perhaps look at what it is that you do? So there's some things that can be translated across. So, for example, um, it, customer engagement and more personalized customer engagement can be used across multiple industries and multiple organizations within the same industry. But the magic also comes in finding new ways of using your data, using your information, using your systems to disrupt the market and to take that leadership position. Mm. Um, you say use your data to disrupt the market, maybe examples that you can give us? Um, so gaining some insights between some trends around what your customers are doing, some trends around uh, new changes that are happening out there in the market, and then thinking about a new product or a better way of doing things, such as uh, Airbnb, where they had a look and they thought, well, there's lots of rooms that are available in people's homes, and they started to create a portal where all of these things were available and they completely disrupted the hotel industry. Uh, how do you then ensure that it is not um, intrusive into understanding your clients, for example? Because um, you speak about Airbnb, um, where you might find that it knows where you've been and therefore it starts um, suggesting trends even when you haven't asked it, uh, asked it to. Or um, social media network, for example, which would know what... Uh, what you do, maybe you go to holidays a lot and suddenly they start suggesting places as if um, it almost feels as if you're not in control anymore as a customer. So one of the important areas of AI is in fact what we call ethical AI. So this is always designed with the people at the center and we need to make sure that we're being transparent and we need to make sure that we're protecting people's privacy. So at all stages, you should have the option to opt in and to opt out of these things and choose how much uh, these various different organizations can have uh, access to information around you, such as things like um, the General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR, that's been rolled out in Europe recently. All right, Emma Murray, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so Emma Murray there is from Microsoft South Africa. Now, this week, we also caught up with author Jackie Pamozzi. She told us what her favorite piece of technology is. 
Hi everyone, my name is Jackie Pamuta, the author of Bear the Blessed Game. My favorite gadget is my audio recording um, gadget. It's from Samsung. Um, I got it about two years ago. It helps me write down my notes. So when I'm doing research for a book or for school or anything like that, I record and then it types down everything for me. So you plug it into your laptop, it downloads the recorded, and there's an app that you use that helps you type down the recordings. So that is my favorite app. SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Use Network at sabc.co.za on email. Welcome back. Now, people living in the Russian capital, Moscow, can now buy petrol via an online app. And Palestinians are now using solar panels to generate electricity without depending on Israel. These are some of the stories that may take headlines in the last week. <laughs> City dwellers in Russia can now add petrol to their online shopping as two startups offer fuel delivery direct to a parked car. Such services are already available in North America and Europe, but may have special appeal in Russia given the country's particularly harsh winters. Imagine you run out of petrol and no one is around to help you. Instead of panicking, now you can press a few buttons on your mobile phone to order a tank and one of our guys will come to refill your car. The companies are riding the trend for on-demand delivery of goods pioneered by U.S. companies such as Uber and Amazon via smartphone technology, which is taking off in Russian cities. And now off we go to the U.S. of A. New digital pills that are expected to promote medication adherence are being tested in the United States. Patients failing to take their prescribed medication is a bigger problem than people might think. A 2017 study by U.S. health officials found that 20% of new prescriptions are never filled. This uh, technology is what they term an ingestible sensor. And then we can look online and see exactly what time the patient took their pills. Developed by the company's Proteus Digital Health, the capsule includes both a medication and a tiny sensor that, when it hits the stomach, it transmits a signal to a patch worn by the patient. That signal is then beamed to a phone or computer. And now, in Israel. From orderly rows of solar panels in a field in the West Bank to the chaotic rooftops of Gaza, Palestinians are hoping that harnessing the energy of the sun can reduce their dependence on Israel for electricity. Uh, we would be in a good position if we reach 5% or maximum 10% uh, uh, of the required electricity supply for Palestine in general from solar energy. Uh, and by that we will follow the lead of an example of other countries where they aim to diversify their energy sources and uh, uh, also in contributing to energy security. The sun may be free, but the technology is not. And Palestinians say their ability to import solar panels has been hampered by Israeli border controls. The authorities' Palestinian Investment Fund plans to build three solar farms and put solar energy into 500 schools. The three new plants will generate 22 megawatts per day. The West Bank needs 1,400 megawatts, but currently only 1,100 megawatts are available. Israel's Defense Ministry had no immediate comment. Alibaba founder Jack Ma has announced a 10 million US dollars netpreneur fund, as we told you earlier in the program. So this week on Twitter, we asked you if you think this will boost tech entrepreneurship in Africa. Now, the majority of respondents say yes, it will boost tech entrepreneurship. That figure is at 42%. 15% of you say no, it will not. And 17% of respondents say they do not know. And 26% of you are asking what netpreneurship actually is. All right, so that's all we have for you. Find us on SABC Network. That's on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. News Network at SABC.co.za on email. We leave you with visuals of artwork made or created with colorful rice in China's Yunnan province. For me and the rest of the network team, have a good night. <laughs>